like to start it off the uh, press conference, and the first question has to go to Adam C. and Cirillo. Let's talk about Moto One and just get it out of the way. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the first lap was hectic, as always, and of course, um, after Colorado and kind of everything that happened there, um, I, I still felt, obviously, felt like I was in the right there, but obviously you're going to be under more of a microscope. I mean, that's just common sense. And um, I felt that the first time I went off the track on the first lap, Dylan kind of came from the inside, and he kind of gave me a little bit nowhere to go. Like, I was already kind of committed to jumping in the air, and it was like kind of a toss-up. And um, my argument there, when they said I shouldn't accelerate when I'm off the track, I'm like, okay, so say I shift down to second gear right there, then I hop back in the track while everybody else is going 60 miles an hour. I mean, that's to me, that's not gonna end too well. And um, So I just try to use common sense the best I can. I feel like I've been good at that in the past, but I mean, with that being said, I understand that I need to stay on the track. I mean, I'm not just, I don't think that I can just go wherever I want out there. You know, I know I got sketchy a couple times on that first lap, but um, I'm just out there trying my best. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm definitely not looking to try to cheat or anything like that, but they saw it how they saw it. I didn't agree. Um, it is what it is. I felt really good about just kind of, you know, obviously because when you work that hard for a moto, I mean, I felt terrible and just kind of grinded it out with survival mode out there and ended up with a third. Um, and it, it's frustrating to get the get the news that you, you know, got pushed back a couple of spots. We worked really hard for these points and I, w I was happy I was able to kind of put that behind me, not let it frustrate me because it could I could have let it ruin my day. You know, I could have gone out there in second moto and rolled around and got seventh or eighth and, you know, did what I did. But um, I put it behind me, did my best. And um, yeah, it's just unfortunate, I guess. Next question for Justin Cooper. You've been getting hole shots and now all of a sudden, I, we didn't even know that you had got third till the last lap. You made some moves on the last lap of the second moto, I believe. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, uh, well, I kind of just kept getting the pit board. You need one more, you need one more. And then I was good for a second, then I needed another person. So I uh, really had to put my head down. I was charging the whole moto, and I just uh, I just picked it up on the second half and just started, you know, doing what I had to do to to make up points as many as I could because uh, that's kind of how uh, high point went downhill is when I got frustrated and kind of let it set me back. So uh, I just kept pushing and... Uh, found my flow towards the end and I was able to pick up like three spots in the last couple laps. So that was able to put me on the podium, which is good. And uh, yeah, just glad to uh, be on the podium again. And the starts were really bad today, honestly. Uh, I really don't know what I didn't execute there. It's just uh, kind of weird. And even my like uh, sight lap starts got in my head a little bit. So uh, yeah, just something uh, not really gonna let it frustrate me. My, my starts have been good all year. Just. Uh, gonna try and put it behind me, do a couple more, and uh, maybe focus a little more on some uh, different technique. Dylan Fernandez, a 1-1 on the day. It's kind of hard to say, take us through the different motos because a 1-1 is about as good as it gets, but what was so special about today? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, it was a tough day because it was hot and humid, and uh, we, rode, uh, we rode after the 450, so the track was really rough, and uh, it's just, uh, I said last week, uh, I feel like uh, more is hard, for the body and the and the bike, more easy is it for me. So I don't know. I just felt good today. Uh, my 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 bike was uh, was really good. We it took time to get back to the good feeling for the outdoors, and uh, now I get it. And uh, I feel I feel really good on the bike. We really find the good setup, and uh, yeah, I, I just feel uh, like myself. I feel like uh, back a uh, little bit back when I was riding the GP, just only outdoor every weekend, uh, and you got to get the flow. It's a little bit what I what I feel now and uh, with the Supercross it's tough to, to um, when you jump from Supercross it's always difficult to, to get straight the flow but now I feel good and uh, I know it was just the perfect day, good start helps a lot today and uh, yeah really happy and uh, that's good for the championship too. First question from the media. Mitch Kendra, Racer X. Uh, Dylan, my question's for you. You mentioned about how it was tough to get started after Supercross. How rewarding was it today to see everything to come together, like you said, the fastest qualifying, getting the great starts like you needed to, and like I said, just getting that first win. How does it? How rewarding is that to finally, you're seeing it pay off now after a little bit of a slower start to the season? Uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, uh, I think you guys in, uh, in English have an expression like, uh, get the monkey off my back, right? Yeah, it's a little bit this, you know, it's, uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I haven't won a, a race, like, uh, I mean, seven racing. I, I, I didn't did won a race this year, and. Uh, yeah, to get this uh, this final finally this overall is a uh, is really good. Is uh, is uh, just the hard work hard work that pay off and uh, just proud. 
Uh, Jim Kimball, this question is for Adam. Adam, I find it interesting. Um, the majority of your competition are, is the Star Racing Team. Um, is there anything different with having your main competitors all so good and they're all on the same team? <laughs> no, I mean, I feel a little bit lonely out there. Uh, I kind of wish that um, Austin Forkner's knee was doing a little bit better so we could have another green bike up there. But, uh, you know, I think all these guys are riding good. Obviously, they're a great team. Got a lot of respect for them. But I don't think it's any, any different for me. I mean, I kind of look at everybody the same, honestly, when I'm out there. I feel like I'm a pretty um, nice, normal dude off the track. But when I'm on the gate, when I'm racing, it's like they're all the same to me, teammates or not. I, I want to beat them just as bad, my friends, whatever it is. So uh, now I wouldn't say it's too much different. Just a quick question for Dylan. Dylan, you race here in October at the Motocross of Nations after they had made uh, some track changes. Um, at least I know they've uh, maintained those track changes now. How do you, what's your viewpoint on at least the, the major change I think of is, is a start? Uh, the track didn't change from the nation. It's uh, the same, only one, uh, one turn in a the back section, but yeah, every, everything else is uh, was the same. They they add more more sand, so I mean I like it. But track today was uh, was really good, really fun uh, as a rider. I think was one of the most fun track we we had this year. And uh, compared to the nation, was a uh, was so much better. You know, the nation was uh, not fun at all here with all the mud. So just uh, I think the, the, they make a really good job to for prep, prep this track to, today and. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know what to say. It was just uh, was just good today. A lot of uh, of bump, a lot of ruts, and everything for for a good day of racing. Next question from the media. Uh, same question as I asked the 450 guys. Uh, the last three races have been three of the gnarliest tracks on the series. How ready are you guys for the week off? And what's your plan for the week off? Business as usual, or kind of take some R and R? Um, <clears throat> I think for me it's probably business as usual. Um, historically in the past this has kind of been, this has really been my, kind of my target going into this year is to try to fix these middle couple rounds because I'm normally, I mean I've been pretty mediocre in the past in outdoors in general but my, my best finishes and where I felt the best is kind of beginning of the series and the end of the series and this middle, this middle portion I mean I think my average finish here in Southwick and all those places probably be like 10th or 11th. I mean, I've kind of been terrible here. So um, I kind of feel feel good to get out of these, you know, couple of races here. And um, obviously winning Southwick was a big, big surprise for me. And even on a day like today where I don't necessarily feel the best, um, kind of coming in here and, and getting a second place, you know, it's it's hard to beat those guys out there, man. They're, they're tough. So it's uh, it's a good time. And I think in regards to the off weekend, just business as usual, get an extra little recovery in on the weekend, uh, maybe play around a cough, I don't know, a little PlayStation, we'll see. Um, Next question from the media. Nope. Oh, oh that's for all three. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, for me, um, uh, I think this last four race was uh, was tough. For the, for the body, was uh, was really four difficult race, so I think uh, the last four days the next three four days uh, we take uh, some holiday we uh, recovery and and back to work after that yeah i agree uh we need some recovery time uh just uh this four run strikes wasn't wouldn't have been that bad but we had that uh two weeks in a row florida being really hot and then southwick being really really rough so uh took a toll on the bodies and just uh made it hard to recover after those but uh yeah all in all i think my Back to my starts, they were they were pretty good. I put myself in a good spot in the first moto and actually almost did a front flip. Like I kissed my front fender in, in that in that downhill section, so uh, I felt pretty stupid about that. But uh, definitely a bummer, and I uh, felt like I was in a good position to you know uh, get back up front. And uh, yeah, that kind of took the wind out of my sails there because it put me pretty far back, and I tend to panic when that happens. So uh, got tired pretty quick trying to make some moves, panicking to get back up to the front, and just. Uh, the second one, I was in a good position in the first turn, and the guy that was in front of me just uh, washed the front end. So, uh, actually, my boot got unbuckled in the first turn somehow. So, yeah, I just uh, got bumped around and just uh, 
wasn't really too lucky in the first couple laps and uh, kind of kind of put myself in. Maybe just made it hard on me. So uh, glad to salvage the podium that today. Justin, you mentioned how it was uh, getting a little bit tough. You had to dig dig a little bit deeper and get one guy, and then the team said get another guy and get a third guy. How tough is it, like you said, to not panic and manage it, but at the same time, instead of getting just one of those guys, you're able to get all three and dig deep enough and save some, but still be able to do it. How did, how did you just manage all that at once? Well, yeah, I got bumped around in the first couple turns of second moto, and then I was actually in like, I was behind all those guys, and they were, they were pulling away from me, and I was trying pretty hard, so it's kind of getting frustrated, and at one point, they were out of sight, and then I just, I started just, you know, kind of sending it and finding my flow a little more and so, uh, yeah, I was able to get back up to the rear of those guys and uh, was able to get all three. So that was pretty, uh, pretty good for me and was uh, good to dig deep at the end of that moto and, you know, get salvage a podium out of the, out of the day. Uh, Justin, you mentioned the first moto, you almost landed on your head. Um, how do you kind of regroup and what do you do to kind of calm yourself down so you're not all you know make more mistakes after a big mistake like that yeah it's just uh more frustration because uh i was actually in a position where i couldn't really get up because my leg was wedged on the inside of the bike and everything so uh it took me a little bit to get up but just at that point you really have to panic and like get up as fast as you can because the first lap you can lose so many positions and bury yourself so far back that uh it doesn't make anything easy from there so uh the quicker you can get up the better and I uh, wasn't really able to do that. I kind of was kind of wags and stuck, but uh, yeah, just kind of a bummer situation, but I uh, was able to, you know, get kind of lucky and uh, ended up in, I think, fourth and uh, after Adam's penalty, third, which uh, was good for me and I kind of got lucky, but that's, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, and then Adam, you kind of mentioned earlier comparing today versus years past. Have you kind of done that uh, uh, often this year, this season, like compared where you're at this season versus the, the period, just because it's been so long since you kind of like had an outdoor season in a row? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's funny. It's funny how fast uh, the standard for yourself changes. Like a couple years ago, I get a second at Red Bud and dude, I would be so stoked. I mean, I'd be having the best weekend off ever, you know, just awesome. And then now you get second, it's like, after winning five of the first six and it's all you want is to win i mean it's like a drug it's like everything you think about it's you hate seeing anybody else you know i'm happy for dylan obviously winning but you ha you hate to see anybody else win like you just you want it so bad you feel like it's yours and um i think it just goes to show i think i've really i've always put my heart and soul into to what i do and i've always felt like i've worked really hard but this last year i really took a big look in the mirror and, and be like what am i what do i really want to get out of this you know and so i think the standard for myself has changed you know i i hold myself to a higher standard all the time 24 7 and um uh, you know when it second sucks now I, I hate it um i'm grateful you know a lot of people wish they were here but um i've come a long way but i certainly have a long way to go last year we started kind of basically at uh, at hangtown with the questions but now we're a few feet few weeks away from the announcement if you were called from the uh, AMA to ride for the Motocross of Nations to represent the Team USA. Would you be part of it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's gonna be a tough one this year, I right hear. Uh, Assen is definitely brutal, brutal sand track, and just uh, racing the four fifties in every moto is just uh, it's gonna be gnarly. So uh, I think it's gonna come down to good starts and just uh, putting yourself in as good of a position as you can for uh, being on the 250 and just fighting through through the whole moto and just uh, doing the best you can. So yeah, if I get called for the opportunity, I'll take it. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, I'd be I'd be excited. That'd be pretty cool. Adam C. and Cirillo? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It'd be an honor to represent uh, the USA. I, I haven't done it before. I'd, I'd love to get the chance. And Dylan Ferrandez, if the French Federation calls you, are you in? Uh, for me, uh, I already say that I, I won't ride the nation uh, this year because um, I know this track, and uh, I told you guys you're gonna get kicked. I mean, you're gonna you're not gonna understand what will happen there. You're gonna get passed by guy you never hear before. It's uh, it's just a, a track in Netherlands, in Netherlands that's crazy. Really, it's the biggest sand you can find, and uh, 
is a uh, you know I, I had a long season and uh, I'm really looking forward the next season to do something uh, great and uh, we had a big challenge with the team that we want we want to do so for me uh, the 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 time I mean the calendar the the weekend that there's nation is a little bit too far after the season so I feel it's uh, not a waste of time but you have to after the national you have to to, to stay fresh you have to training uh, again in outdoors and uh, and yeah, Supercross is coming uh, coming fast. And uh, I mean, uh, I say to the, the nas my national team that I, I won't race because uh, I want to be ready for next year's Supercross. And uh, I did, did uh, the nation two times. We won two times. And uh, you know, it's big trouble. You have to, to go in, uh, in Netherlands maybe two weeks before the race. You have to send the parts. You have to train in sand. It's a big, big organization. And uh, if you want to do good there, you have to, I mean, <laughs> we're from for, for me and, and uh, the guy around me that we never ride sun uh, we have South Week, but South Week is completely different we, we never ride in, uh, in a big sand track like they have in Europe and uh, it's just difficult the guy just grew up on track like that and, and rode every day and us we, we just forget what is sand even me I, I rode uh, five, five, six years the, um, the world championship with sand uh, with like four, four race of sand every year and I already forgot how to, to ride good in sand so it's, a, it's an early race and uh, I won't be a, a part of it. Maybe we, maybe we can race the MotoGP track there. Just leave the sand out of it. <laughs> I don't well, know, just a thought. Something to think about. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys have a great 4th uh, of July weekend.